That's Thievery Corporation here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Nermeen? Uh, we're joined here in the studio uh, by former Lieutenant Dan Choi, who attended the trial this weekend but was barred from returning on Monday. Lieutenant Choi is an Iraq combat veteran and supporter of Bradley Manning. Can you explain, Dan, what happened um, on Monday at the trial? I went to the main gate with uh, Dan Ellsberg, and uh, we were stopped for about 10 minutes, delayed from entering the base. They knew that we were going there for trial. I had been there the few days beforehand in full uniform. This is the uniform that I was wearing, and I was accosted as to why I'm wearing the uniform if I was discharged, that I'm not allowed to wear the uniform. And I argued with them and said, take a look at the Army Regulation 670-1, as well as Schacht versus the United States, 1970. I have the right to wear this uniform. Him. And he said, well, I'm not trying to fight you. And I said, well, I, I will pick a fight with you because I know the law and it's it's my right to be there to support Bradley Manning. Uh, Why he did let they us say in. you can't wear the uniform? What, what I kind think, of well, The real reason, I think, is they're angry uh, that anybody who's a combat veteran of the Iraq war, uh, who served in our military, who's proud of their service, would dare sit in support of Bradley Manning. And it was a way for the military uh, public affairs office to control the message and the images that go out to the public. I think that's the real reason. And so, as I've noticed throughout many times, throughout not only this ordeal and this event, but throughout my military service and watching the military now from the outside side. They do find other ways to punish those who they disagree with. So on Monday, exactly what happened when you tried to go in? They when I tried to you? go in, uh, they said that I was heckling the hearing, which was impossible because I wasn't in the hearing that morning. Uh, the past two days, I was absolutely quiet and peaceful, uh, adding to the decorum and the dignity of the event. But they said that I was heckling, and so they ejected me. They said, get out of here. Uh, get out of the base. Yes, major sides, and I have a U.S. Marshal named John. Uh, they said that I was disruptive, uh, at, at which point they handcuffed me and then they high tackled me to the ground, pinned me down and I have a, a picture uh, of and actually x-rays uh, that I took the night of uh, that uh, show that I was bruised in my uh, left leg. Uh, I was given this uh, because of my uh, my wrist sprain. You're wearing a and wrist brace. Yes, I was, I'm actually supposed to wear it on both, but it's really the right uh, wrist that was damaged the most. And this is my rank that uh, doesn't go back on anymore. Uh, because? So, because they assaulted me. And the, when they ripped off the, uh, the rank, it was, uh, I don't know if it was intended, I, was, I wasn't they watching They ripped everything. the rank off your shoulder? As they were throwing me to the ground, and I was handcuffed. Now, Dimitri's here in a minute with the business, uh, but for now, an anti-ballistic uh, missile has just been test-fired in Kazakhstan as part of the Russian military's defense modernization drive. Uh, this, the display of firepower comes amid the long-lasting Russia-NATO standoff over the U.S.-backed missile defense system planned for Eastern Europe and Turkey. Moscow demands legal guarantees. The system will not undermine the country's security and suggest that the actions of the U.S. could undermine the recent START treaty. Taliban insurgents in the southern province of Kandahar give up the insurgency and join the Afghan government as part of a reconciliation program. They say they've had enough fighting. Surrender in Kandahar. A group of 50 Taliban insurgents gave up their arms and joined the Afghan government Tuesday. The insurgents handed over the Taliban's white flag, receiving an Afghan government flag in return. Commander Fedo Mohammed said they were fed up with fighting. Our houses were destroyed and our friends martyred as a result of war. Now, we've decided to join the Afghan government and live in peace in the future. The surrender comes after Monday's disclosure by senior U.S. officials that their 10-month secret dialogue with Afghanistan's Taliban insurgents had reached a critical juncture and a breakthrough leading to peace talks to end the 10-year Afghan war is possible. The stakes could not be higher. Failure could condemn Afghanistan to continued conflict. Success could mean a political end to the war and the possibility that parts of the Taliban could be reconciled.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, December 21st, 2011. My website is ggnonline.com. If you'd like to visit that, you can uh, receive updates from GGN. Also on YouTube, it's djarko2012. You can check out all the playlists and that and subscribe if you'd like. Um, all the headlines and links will be in YouTube's video description, so check that out. Also, if you'd like to help donate, um, you can do that on YouTube's video description or on ggnonline.com. Okay, um, the first article up is... Uh, U.S. attacks Afghanistan against Al-Qaeda, not Taliban, says Biden. So now everything's, uh, the, all the rhetoric is uh, uh, going, what, uh, 180 right now. It says here the Vice President of the United States, Biden, has said that the Taliban are not the enemy of the United States, adding that the U.S. and Pakistan would have been feeling comfortable with the Taliban government in Kabul. And, uh, or it says, but Al-Qaeda had created troubles. Well, who's Al-Qaeda? Well, it's the intelligence agencies ran. That's who does it. So they create the, the turmoil, and they go in there, and they, they guard the poppy fields, get the drug uh, thing going. And uh, in Afghanistan and in Pakistan, they got their puppet regime that actually has nuclear weapons. So, um, but uh, it's kind of the same thing as in Pakistan, right? Um, as uh, in Afghanistan, you just saw in that video. What is it? It's that the uh, Taliban... And the people are now uh, siding with the government, with these uh, puppet governments that the U.S. and the West has set up. But I did cover it before, um, and I've covered it many times, about the Taliban being paid um, to provide protection for U.S. convoys. So it says here, transition to transformation. Afghan people must have a realization that NATO and the U.S., uh, have no love for, with them or for them. In fact, their own strategy or strategic objectives compel them to remain stuck in Afghanistan and Pakistan for promoting a regional instability by promoting terrorism and internally destabilizing both countries as an excuse to continue their mission, which is exactly what I just said. This was by Dr. Uh, Raha Muhammad Khan. So we're given the appearance that uh, everything's the troops are pulling out, bases are being shut down in Iraq, and like I said before, the West is never going to leave Iraq because of the oil, and if they leave, then, of course, um, there's going to be uh, influence from Iran in that. That's who they're uh, primarily concerned about. So they're going to have troops there. They're going to have the biggest uh, military base in the world there in Iraq. And a dictatorship in um, Iraq, and then in Pakistan, you actually almost have a... Um, uh, people siding with the military now. So you may have a military dictatorship in Pakistan as well. And of course in Libya you have Al-Qaeda, uh, the terrorists running that uh, state as well. And it's what? Sharia law. And so that's what's happening now. Um, because of what the West is doing, they're actually uh, radicalizing uh, Muslims. So expose U.S. troops guarded terrorist camp in Iraq. So it says here U.S. State Department now races to find a new home for the U.S. State Department listed terrorist organizations says the U.S. has been guarding a terrorist training camp inside Iraq with U.S. troops and is planning to relocate them possibly in a freshly abandoned U.S. military base in Iraq while D.C. lobbyists work feverishly to have them delisted, armed, and sent to conduct terrorist operations in Iran. That's right. The, those, quote, rebels in Libya were actually terrorists from Afghanistan and Iraq. So it says here, um, after Biden says Taliban is not America's enemy, Taliban lashes out at U.S. occupation of Iraq. In a statement attributed to Taliban spokesman, the group accused the U.S. of invading Iraq in 2003 in a bid to, quote, control its rich mineral resources and fill its belly with oil. And that's the same with Afghanistan, except for the oil. But despite uh, spending trillions of dollars and losing thousands of American soldiers, the Taliban said, quote, it was the will of Allah. Uh, I said that this... Uh, neck of imperialism would be broken. But it does make sense that the Taliban are our friends because, you know, the whole point of this was what? So that right now um, people in America, American citizens, could be de declared terrorists. And that was the whole point, uh, to have all those laws passed for that purpose. Okay, next up, Israel forms core for strategic strikes amid deepening tensions between Iran and its principal adversaries. The United States and Israel, the Jewish state, has formed a special forces command to carry out strategic strikes deep inside hostile territory. Israeli defense officials said the elite new core area of operations includes a third circle, a term that usually encompasses the Persian Gulf and the Horn of Africa. And it goes on here, it says that it's equivalent to the U.S. Special Operations Command, uh, uh, basically the Navy SEALs that did the... Um, uh, I guess you can call it the, the stage raid and assassination of bin Laden. So says here, does this U.S. and Israel joint missile defense drill say anything about the plans for it? says the Jerusalem Post reports largest ever, quote, uh, missile defense exercise will commence this spring in response to Iran's nuclear ambition. The U.S. will deploy its theater high-altitude area defense missile system and, do, and a ship-based uh, system to simulate intercepting incoming 
uh, salvo into Israel. The two systems will work in conjunction with Israel's Aero, Patriot, and Iron Dome missile system. And we have boots on the ground. U.S. Special Forces join hunt for Ugandan rebels. And remember this article, Obama orders U.S. troops to help chase down African Army leader. Uh, that was uh, in, what, October 14th, 2011. I have authorized a small number of combat-equipped U.S. forces to deploy to Central Africa to provide assistance to regional forces that are working towards removal of Joseph Kony from the battlefield. So, and then it says here that the U.S. Special Forces has set up a base in Central African Republic as part of the regional hunt for fighters from the Ugandan-born Lord's Resistant Army Group. Military sources said on Monday the deployment of this contingent, the size of which is unknown, was carried out very discreetly with Ugandan military aircraft as Central African military officials said on condition of anonymity. The Lord's Resistance Army emerged from the frustrations of Uganda's marginalized uh, Akoli ethnic group against the government, but its leaders have since dropped their national political agenda from the narrow objective of pillage and plunder. That's talking about uh, um, mutilating civilians, abducting children for soldiers, and sex slaves. Then we have burn Egyptians in Hitler ovens, says general, a retired Egyptian general, says the protesters who came under attack by soldiers were delinquents who deserved to be thrown into Hitler's ovens. Next up, we have uh, Russia demands NATO probe into civilian deaths in Libya caused by bombing campaign. That's right. I just watched a documentary yesterday. It was very good. And um, it was uh, basically breaking down the casualty list. And there was more uh, people killed from NATO bombings um, than the actual people that were killed on the ground. And most of the people that were killed on the ground were uh, when the rebel terrorists were attacking um, basically military bases and they stole all their weapons and tanks and um, surface air missiles and stuff like that and they just wreaked havoc and they started occupying towns and that's basically how it happened and then all we saw on TV was what oh see the rebels the protesters the peaceful protesters they're getting their freedom back um, and you know the whole thing was that the Libyan soldiers actually when they were attacking their base they just stood there they shot in the air and they didn't do anything they didn't kill anybody and they really were trying to uh, resist uh, uh, playing into what they were doing but it was those rebel terrorists man they were hanging any soldiers that they caught upside down uh, binding them and just uh, beheading them and all kinds of brutal stuff. And it says here, Turkey warns of reprisals if France passes genocide denial bill. It says here uh, that they're due to vote on making it illegal to deny 1915 Armenian massacre was genocide. And this, of course, will what uh, raise tensions between France and Turkey. Majority of Syrians support al-Assad, says figures show that in the past weeks, plenty of pro-Assad rallies have taken place in the city across. In this interview, a professor uh, from a Lebanese university says, of course, the Arabs and Americans and the Europeans should not that the majority of Syrians are pro-Bashar al-Assad and his regime. And a CIA-affiliated spy that Iran captured earlier this month in the country has been receiving orders from BAA Systems, a British weapons company headquartered in London. Been waiting to cover this. Now I have an opportunity. Medal of Honor winner Dakota Meyer drops BAA lawsuit. The highly decorated U.S. Marine has settled a lawsuit with BAA Systems over allegations that a manager called him mentally unstable because what? He didn't want uh, weapons to be sold. Uh, sniper uh, sniper rifles to Pakistan. China believes that unrest in Kazakhstan supported by external forces. China condemns the riots and is ready to provide necessary assistance to maintain stability in Kazakhstan. That's pretty interesting. Remember this article, Tony Blair adds Kazakhstan to his growing list of business clients, uh, an advisory group to help the authoritarian regime implement economic reform. And UK defense firm BAE Systems is also thought to have played a role in establishing the relation. And the Collective Security Treaty Organization today announced that that no one will be able to establish military bases on the territory of the member states without express agreement of member states that the United States will find it impossible to establish a new base in Central Asia. Eurasian Spring, the Mink Leopard Revolutions. So you had a bunch of oil workers that were protesting, and then you started to get violent burning buildings and stuff like that. But these oil countries are worried about other oil countries, like the uprisings that they're seeing around them, and now it's happening in Kazakhstan, possibly provoked by outside uh, interest. But either way, they say it's not the uprising to be looking at, but the government's first line of attack, which was social media, the famous channel of the Arab Spring. U.S. and Navy expects to base combat ships in Singapore. There is no flag large enough to cover the shame of killing of innocent people. And lastly, the eyes that reveal the trauma of war hunting portraits show Marines before, during, and after service in Afghanistan. And uh, they start from left and they go to right. You can go in there and check that out. The link will be posted. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.